In this video, we will explore how conditionals relate to each other and specifically talk about inverses, converses, and contrapositives. So let's go ahead and start with any conditional. And in order to keep things simple, I'm going to use the conditional if p then q. And I'm going to refer to the conditional as my original statement. And the three that we want to specifically discuss in this video are the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. The wonderful thing about each and every one of these is that anytime you're asked to produce one of them, they will always give you a hint that tells you how to produce it. For instance, the converse. If I look at the first two letters of the word converse, C and O, the first two letters of this word tell me exactly what I need to do to the conditional in order to obtain the converse. The C and the O in the word converse tells me I need to change the order around. So in order to obtain the conditional, uh, excuse me, in order to obtain the converse, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the conditional and I'm going to change the order. So the Q, which initially came second, is now going to come first. The P, which originally came first, is now going to come second. And now I've got my converse. If Q, then P. In order to obtain the inverse, again, the hint is right there in the word. I, N, the first two letters, stand for I negate. So what we're going to do to write the inverse is we're going to go back to the original statement. We always go back to the original conditional. And we're going to negate each piece. So if we negate the first part, the hypothesis, we get not P. When we negate the second part, the conclusion, we get not Q. So the inverse of the conditional if P then Q is if not P then not Q. The last one, the contrapositive, some kids remember it's the big long one, so I have to do everything. Again, though, I'm going to go right into the word and look for some hints that will help me. CO, well, I know from the converse that means to change the order. But this one, I need to not only change the order, but I need to negate 2. And again, sometimes kids will remember it's the big long one, so you have to do everything. So I need to go back to the conditional. I need to negate the second part and make that come first. So if not Q comes first, I need to now negate P, so negation P, which now comes second. But again, anytime you're asked to do any one of these, they'll always give you the hint because the hint is right in the word. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this table and let's go ahead and do some of these. The converse, I'm going to go ahead and look at the first letters. C and the O tells me I'm going to get the converse by changing the order. So if I go look at this first conditional and change the order around, I end up with if Q, then not P. Change the order for this one around, I end up with if P, then Q. Change the order for the third one around, I end up with if not Q, then not P. For the inverse, I'm simply going to go back to the original statements and I negate. These are my original statements that I need to go back to. So I'm going to go back to those that I've highlighted in yellow and I'm going to negate each part. So negation of not P is going to become P. Negation of Q is going to stay negation Q. For the second one, when I negate the first part, I end up with not Q. Negate the second part, not P. And then the last one, when I negate the hypothesis, I end up with P. And when I negate the conclusion, I end up with Q. Contrapositive, it's the big long one. I have to do everything. Or looking at the first four letters, change order, negate 2. So this not Q, or this Q from the original is going to become not Q at the very beginning. This not P from the original is going to become P, but at the end. And looking at the second statement, this P is going to come first, but with a negation. The Q is going to come last, but with a negation. And likewise, the not Q is going to come first, but negated. The not P second, 
but it's negation. Down at the bottom, they want you to write in sentences. I'm going to skip down to that second example, which says, if I do not study, then I will not pass the test. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, they want me to write these in sentences. So remember that a negation, an, a conditional, always starts with the word if, connects with the word then. And I might go ahead and put those if and then in my sentences before I even start to fill any statements in. Converse, change the order. If I do not pass the test, then I did not study. Inverse, I negate. So I'm simply going to negate each piece. So the negation of I do not study is I do study. The negation of the second part, I will pass the test. Notice that the tense doesn't matter here, whether it's past tense, present tense, or future tense. Contrapositive, I'm going to do it all, change the order, and negate. So the negation of I will not pass the test is I will pass the test or I do pass the test. In the negation of the first part, I did study, or I do study. And again, the tense is not important here. All right, flipping up to the top of the next page, they want us to fill in the por remaining portion of the truth table. So they want us to fill in the truth table for the conditional, the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Remember that your rule for the arrow in every single one of these is alphabetical order with respect to the truth values. So as long as the truth values aren't out of alphabetical order, it's all good. So for the conditional, if P, then Q, the two lines that I, or two columns I want to look at in this table are the P's and the Q's. And if true, then true. That's all good. If true, then false. There's the instance where they're not in alphabetical order, so that makes the conditional false. If false, then true. Well, an F can come before two, T in the alphabet, so this one is all good. If false, then false. Not out of alphabetical order, so we're all good. When we go to fill in the column for converse, notice that the Q has to come first, the P has to come second. So when I go look at these, I'm still looking at my column for P and my column for Q, but this time I'm looking at this one first, this one second. So if true, then true. That's all good. If false, then true. F comes before T in the alphabet. That's all good. If true, then false. There's the problem and that T does not come before F in the alphabet. So that's truth value is false. And if false, then false, not out of alphabetical order, so the truth value is true. The inverse, if not P, then not Q. This time, the two columns I want to take a look at in the truth table are not P and not Q. But again, my rule is the same, and then I'm looking for truth values that aren't out of alphabetical order. So if false, then false is good, true. If false, then true. Uh, in alphabetical order, so it's okay. If true, then false. T does not come before F in the alphabet, so there's our problem. That guy is false. If true, then true. We're in good shape in that our inverse is true. And then lastly, our contrapositive. Again, notice that we have to look at the not Q first, the not P second. So I'm still looking at those same two columns that I highlighted in blue, but this time I'm looking at the Q, not Q column first and the not P column second. So if false, then false, not out of alphabetical order, so we're all good. If true, then false, T does not come before F in the alphabet, so this guy is false. If false, then true, that one is okay because F comes before T in the alphabet, so our contrapositive is true.
If true, then true. We're all good. All right, now that we've got this fancy pants truth table filled in, it says look at the conditional and the contrapositive. What do you notice about the truth values in these columns? So let's go ahead and take a look at those for a minute. Here's my conditional. Here's my contrapositive. Notice that in every line, the truth values are exactly the same. And we have a special name for what happens when the truth values are exactly the same. So in answer to their question, what happens or what do you notice about the truth values? They're exactly the same. And the name that we have for that in logic is logically equivalent statements. So logically equivalent statements are two, truth, two statements that have exactly the same truth values in a truth table. Notice above that in the table, the converse and the inverse are also logically equivalent. They both have exactly the same truth values. Notice, too, that the inverse is actually the contrapositive of the converse. So if we take the converse and change its order and negate, we end up with the inverse. So as far as the pairs of related conditionals that are logically equivalent, the conditional is going to always be logically equivalent to the contrapositive. And the converse is always going to be logically equivalent to the inverse. So in number or in the example where they ask you to write a logically equivalent statement for each conditional, because we're given the conditional and we know that the conditional is logically equivalent to the contrapositive, when they ask us to write a logically equivalent statement, that's a sneaky way of asking us for the contrapositive. So the contrapositive of the first statement is if not A then B. The contrapositive or the logically equivalent statement for the second conditional is if Q, then not P. And the logically equivalent statement for the third conditional is going to be its contrapositive, if N, then M. All right, that's all I have on related conditionals, folks. If you have any questions or if I said something in the video that doesn't make sense, make a note of it so that you can remember to ask me about it the next time that you come back to class.